Welcome to the Effortless Swimming Podcast. My guest today is someone who I had on fairly recently. It's Brian Johns from Form Goggles. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me. The reason I wanted to get you back on is, well, number one, because there's a whole bunch of new features that have uh, just about to roll out with the, the Form Goggles, which I want to talk about and, I, and I'm quite excited about. And some of the athletes who came on uh, our camp recently in Thailand have been beta testing them and, um, and have really enjoyed the features. So I want to talk about those. Um, but for the swimmers who don't have form goggles, it's going to be worthwhile for you as well. Talking about some of these technique points that uh, well, that the goggles measure and can help you improve on, um, but why they're important and what you can do to swim better using some of these uh, key things around technique, primarily with head position to start with and breathing. Um, but we'll dig into that in a little bit more detail. So uh, first of all, I want to start with the form score. So... Uh, I guess I'll, I'll let you explain what, what this is and then I, I want to talk about um, why I think it's such a, such a good feature and a way for people to measure how well they're, they're swimming. Yeah, so form score is a measure that we've come up with to be a truer measure of swimming efficiency. I think a lot of people try and find that balance between like increasing their stroke length, so trying to take fewer strokes per length or increase their DPS while maintaining or improving their time. And it's that kind of uh, seesaw battle between like lengthening your stroke but not lengthening it so much that you slow down. And then on the other side, speeding up, going faster, but in an efficient way. And so form score is kind of a um, updated tool to do that. We use it very specifically on rather than like Swolf where you might count your strokes and count your seconds. It's a lot more specific. So taking your distance per stroke by the centimeter, taking your speed meters per second. Um, but uh, then taking the next step where normalizing it for your height. So making sure that it's a little bit more uh, unique to you. And then also being able to use it from a speed perspective so that you can actually use it in different pools. So rather than having like, this is your Swolf in a 25 meter pool and a 50 meter pool, you have a form score that sticks with you across whatever pool you're swimming in. And so it just ends up being a more universal uh, score for you to measure your efficiency and help to see if your technique is strengthening, weakening, or where it's falling apart when you're swimming. And it's essentially a score out of 100 and Speaking to to Scott, who who works at Form as well, he's ex uh, ex Olympian. He he said he was able to achieve somewhere in the the low nineties, I think, for one of the swims he did recently. Uh, but he said the average user was like, "What's what's the score?" You know, for the the average user, it's quite it's on the lower end, isn't it? Like forty or or fifty, somewhere like that. It's kind of in the middle, 45 to 50 is where um, kind of like the middle of the bell curve would be. And that's um, been most of our um, our users are, in, are around that area. So that's like equivalent of like being a two minute per 100 pace and uh, with a normal stroke count around that. And so um, as you strengthen, we find that like most of our um, maybe age group level triathletes might be in like the sixties, maybe the pro levels might be more like seventies, eighties. And then to get to like a nineties is like, that's what I'm at too, as a former Olympic swimmer. And, but we do see some uh, like former competitive swimmers who get up to that range as well. Mm. And I think it's good to know roughly mm. where, you know, where people sit. And if someone's getting a, a 40 or a 45 out of a hundred, initially it might go, well, oh, hang on a minute. Like that's, um, I feel like that's not that, that good but the thing is just compare it to yourself can look to improve on where you're currently at and the good thing there is there's so much room to improve and if you go from a 40 to a 50 up to a, to a 60 that's a sign that your, your technique is really improving so um, while initially and I, I compare it to when people look at themselves swim they go oh I can't believe I look like that and they're quite yeah maybe a bit embarrassed about it or they go oh I thought I looked better well you've got a starting point now and now you can now you can go about improving, and uh, the fact that it's individualized to to you know to, to height, and it's not just swolf swolf. I think it's um, I think that's a much better approach for things. So it's basically just a, a score of your efficiency and speed. Um, but you've I guess there's some secret sauce there, right? That you've had to put in all this data that you've got in form, and you've had to work out a way to be able to give a score that that really just tells you where you're at with your, your technique. Is that right? 
Yeah, I think it like what you see there where it's like a lot of people might see it for the first time and be like, ooh, that's not what I would have expected. But we are scoring it across like our whole user base, which is like people who are adults learning how to swim right through to former Olympians and stuff like that on the scale of mm -hmm. one to 100. And then like wherever you start is like a good starting point for you. If you start at 45, then try and incrementally go up from there. Might take just like improving your technique or improving your time. It takes a little bit of time to see the long-term sustainable changes, but you can also use in the goggles to see where it's like, okay, you swim a hundred and you're like, really strong, really fast on the first 25, but then you fall apart pretty quickly and then helps you teach like how to manage your effort a little bit better. Remind yourself that, oh, it's falling apart. I got to get back onto whatever technique piece you're working on and just really helps you give them a better tool so that you can really evaluate how your technique is going in the moment. That's what Scott was saying. He said, oh, that he did a hundred, I think in a short course pool and his first lap was, 96 or something and then he dropped off it was like 92 91 and he's like hey, hang on a minute like i feel like i was pretty much the same but then when he looked at the metrics behind it, he's like okay i was like i took an extra stroke here or um maybe my rating dropped off so even at that elite level you know it's that no one's no one's perfect and there's always things to to work on so that's how data like that can be quite useful i think yeah, definitely. Like I have a similar experience where I'm trying to build my volume back up. And so I just did a set of like 15 100s best average the other day. And it's like, okay, the first five, I'm in the right spot, but then I start to fall apart. And it's like, ooh, like you can see how much you're falling apart. Remind, like giving myself reminders to get back on it so that I can hold my time and my technique. And then on the, on the flip side, I find with like a lot of the people who work at Forum who've been testing this out a lot are more the recreational triathlete level. And they see the same thing where it's like, oh, I didn't realize how much harder I was going in that first 50. They learn to dial it back, be able to manage their effort across. And then it's like, just do a 200 and keep it all the same. How much different that can feel and um, how much easier it is to just pull back the gear on the first length, be better at the rest of it and just be able to manage things a little bit better. And uh, those are kind of the very quick gains that we see people um, have using form score. That's a good one. It, it happens so often that it feels easy at the start. Let's say you're doing a 200. It feels easy that first 50. But if that's going to be five seconds faster compared to the rest of your, your 50s in that 200, well, you've probably gone out too hard, even though it feels, feels easy. So it's, uh, yeah, people who are new to the sport, it takes a while to be able to dial in the effort so that you don't blow up later on in an interval or in the session. And it's so incremental with uh, how much additional effort you need to put in to go, to go faster. Like it's just, it's, it's so, so small and um, very hard to judge sometimes. And so that, that takes time and having something like that, you know, like the form score, for example, to be able to judge, uh, okay, I put in way too much effort here and I, I dropped off a lot. Um, to be able to see that data, I think for a lot of people can be very helpful because it just shows you, or it doesn't lie. It's not going to, um, it's not subjective like perceived effort, I guess. It's just going to tell you where you're at with things. Yeah, like the, the other thing that we find is like finding that effort and being able to manage the training, that's good. And then, well, on that first length, that is your form score on that first length. And so it's a little bit aspirational as well, where it's like, okay, my first length, I might've been trying too hard. I was a 65, then I fell off to fifties, but like that 65 is a real number. You went that efficiently on that first 25. So like you can like, can you dial it back to 62 and hold 62s the rest of the way, not all the way back to 52. Like there's a lot of ways to be um, inspired by like, okay, I can be that good. It's just a bit matter of being consistently that good all the time and learning how to build the training out so that you can find a way to do that. Mm. So that's the, uh, the form score, which I think is a great, just easy, simple way to measure where you're currently at with your technique efficiency. The, the next thing that or the other features that you've added are primarily to do with the head and the, and the breathing. Do you want to talk about uh, maybe the first one, which we've got is the head roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a selection of like what we're calling really the whole thing together is called head coach and form score is like the vital part of measuring your technique day to day with it. Within that, we have the, we have five more skills, one of them being peak head roll. And 
with the goggles, we can very easily measure like how your head is moving in the water. And we know that how important head position is as a starting point for good technique in, in the water, where it's like, yeah, your arms might be doing the perfect thing, but it, if your head's going back and forth, well, the, the boat's going to move where the front of the boat goes. So making sure that um, your head position and breathing are very good technique. So with peak head roll, one of, one of the things that we see for as a big error for swimmers, especially as they are learning how to swim for longer distances, is turning their whole body to breathe and getting their whole face out of the water, having a lot of unnecessary movement in order to take that breath and learning how to minimize that movement in order to keep that, you still get a full breath of air, but doing it in a way where you are minimizing how much you're moving around the rest of your body so you can always be moving forward. So with peak head roll, it's we're just measuring from the neutral spot, head looking straight down, all the way to where you're looking to take your breath. And we're trying to minimize that angle so that you can actually see how your head movement bringing back down can actually make you a more streamlined body. Yeah, it's... Um... I, I see it quite a, quite a bit when people will turn their head too far and look up to almost the ceiling sometimes. In worst case scenario, they're looking up, you know, directly upwards. So that's a, that'd be an interesting interesting one and probably a bit of a surprise for a few people when they see how far they're turning. And one of the things that uh, quite often happens is that I see people will often have their head too deep in the water. So their head's fully submerged. And then in order to be able to get a breath, they've usually got to just turn their head a long way. So that's kind of one of the key mistakes that I see made is going from having your head too deep in the water because they're trying to bring their, their legs up, but they're overdoing the depth of the head. And then they are forced to just turn a long way. So that can be a, a cause of excess uh, head roll. Uh, and then sometimes just either being balanced or just being comfortable uh, keeping the, the bottom part of your face in the, in the water there. So ideally want to be looking directly to the, to the side and have it, I'd say like a, a 90 degree turn, I guess, rather than a, a 180 degree roll of the head. Yeah. And with the, with the goggles, we have a real time experience where you can actually see your head position in real time. So in the goggles, in the heads up display, a little dot, like a, like a pong ball right in the middle to represent your head position with two lines to show how far is too far for you on peak head roll. And being able to see that in real time, you can see swimmers like make an immediate change where it's like they take the first or breath or two and it's like their dot is going way beyond the line. It's like, oh, I really have to like clean up how much I'm moving my head position to make sure that it's like only moving enough to breathe. And one of the ways that we've um, tried to individualize that experience is like, it's not just a static experience, no matter how good you are. We kind of have users divided up into five different levels, depending on their skill level at peak head roll. So if you're somebody who's like looking all the way up to the ceiling, well, those lines might be lined up to like 130, 140 degrees, a bit of a leeway, but better than what you were before. For me, I might be at level five. Those lines might be set up more like at 100 degrees where it's like, OK, I got to be like one goggle in, one goggle out. And if I'm a little bit over, it's going to set it off for me. And so having that individualized experience in the goggles that's accomplishable no matter what level you are, but then progressive so that as you get better at the skill, the challenge gets a little bit harder so that you can keep on improving your technique. No, I like that. That's good because it's not any, not necessarily an easy thing to go from looking all the way up to the ceiling to fixing it perfectly. It's, it's that progressive, uh, yeah, progressive improvement where you just start to get more comfortable and more aware of where your head is when you're, when you're taking that breath. Uh, I want to move on to the, the next one, which is pitch. So is this, this is, we're talking up and down movement. Yeah, that's right. So you brought up a good point of like, you see a lot of people burying their head down in the water. And then when they have to take a breath, they have so much more to move to take that breath. And there's a good sort of like symmetry between head pitch and peak head roll where you want your head on the water, minimize how much you have to turn your head in order to breathe. And with head pitch, so similarly, we have an in-goggle experience rather than the lines at the sides, we have the lines at the top and the bottom. The interesting thing for head pitch is like having your head down isn't necessarily better. 
So if you have your head all the way down, your head's going to be buried. If your head's all the way up and you're looking to the, the wall at the other end, that's not ideal either. So being able to create this head pitch experience where you're right in a sweet spot of your head pitch being just right, being on top of the water, looking maybe a meter or two ahead of you rather than like looking straight down. And that might be a little bit of an experience where, like you said, a lot of people are burying their head. They might not realize, they might've been told their whole life, keep your head down, keep your head down, keep your head down. And they're keeping their head down so much that like the water is going over their head, their head. But really having that like sweet spot so that you're looking at just the right spot at the bottom of the pool to keep your head at a nice, neutral, relaxed, postured position so that you can keep your head pitch in line with your body on the surface of the water. And we find that not only does that improve the technique on head pitch going forward, but then also ends up helping your head be in a better place to have your peak head roll as you take your breath better as well. So there's a very good connection between those two metrics. That it's so true, and the the concern that people have when they they hear, well, you can look one to two meters in front, keep just the top of your head out above the water. They think that their entire body position is related to where their their head is, but it's like anything in life. It's like too much of something is not a not a good thing. Too much of your head down in the water doesn't necessarily mean it'll bring your legs up. It's probably going to change your posture. It's going to make other things harder in the stroke. So there's a sweet spot there, and you talked about it before. So those two things have a big correlation to, to where you're going to be breathing and sitting in the water. And I've had a couple swimmers who have come to clinics and they didn't know that you should keep your head still. So I've had swimmers who are sort of moving their head left to right when they're not breathing, the head's rolling around, your head stays still, your body rotates around it, and your head really just moves when you're going to, to take a breath. And a big mistake that people make is They'll go from a, a good head position to then when they take a breath, they'll look up and then turn. And you'll see that with the with the head pitch. So as for the most part, you want to just go from looking down to turning to the side to breathe. A little bit of lift, I don't mind, especially you look at someone like Kyle Chalmers. He has a little bit of a look forwards and then turn. So some of it is is certainly okay, but a lot of people do it excessively. So it's about finding that range and, and, and what's right for you depending on the type of events that you're doing and the, and the style that you've got when you, when you swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, I completely agree where like oftentimes you see the swimmer lifting their head up that might set off their, their head pitch in this experience and then breathing also find the other way around it too, where it's like they're breathing with the pull of their arm. And so they end up rotating and looking backwards you can see like that head pitch dropping down as they look backwards. Um, mm through their breath too. So just finding that, like, again, kind of that sweet spot during the breath to be like looking towards the wall, not lifting up, not looking down and finding a good balance in their head position in order to keep their breath in time with their swimming. Mm. It's a, uh, it's such a fundamental thing you, that you want to get right is that head position, but it's very easy to, for it to slip out of place, especially when you start to fatigue and, Two weeks ago, we had our, our camp in Thailand and uh, myself and one of the other coaches, Mitch, we were in doing a training session and we had one of the other coaches, Sam, he was just taking us through this session because, um, and I, it's been a long time since I've been coached from on deck because normally it's like, you know, as you get older, you're not in a squad, you're just kind of doing your thing. Uh, but we were doing some sprints and Sam said to me, just keep your head still, you're moving, it's moving around too much. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> but it's like, all right, well, that's great feedback because I just don't get that yet, you know, from anyone on deck because I'm just training by myself or in a squad without a coach on deck. So it doesn't matter what level of swimming you're at, this stuff can still start to creep into your, to your stroke. So that sort of feedback, especially from something like the goggles, is, is super useful. So uh, it, it doesn't matter where you're at with it. This stuff uh, still happens. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Like, I'm the same where it's like, yeah, I know a lot about swimming. I've been swimming on my own. So when you hear some feedback, it's like, oh, wow, I guess I'm doing something wrong here. But like with uh, like I've coached age groupers and masters and ki kids going to Olympics and stuff like that, the what they're actually doing for technique or like the technical cues that we might be giving like an eight year old to a 20 year old really isn't that much different where it's like, yeah, you're you got to keep your head still. You're moving too much to breathe. Just a margin for error 
narrows where it's like when you're teaching somebody to swim, it's like, okay, they might be like flipping onto their back and they're learning how to just turn their head to breathe. Whereas like that Olympian might be like, okay, you're Kyle Chalmers and you're like, okay, you're lifting your head up a little bit to breathe, try and do it a little bit less. Or it's like the margin for error becomes like centimeters rather than like mm -hmm. a whole um, process of doing it. And so it's just like that foundational skill and getting sharper and sharper and sharper at it. The, these experiences in the goggles really help out with that too. Mm. Now, the next one is uh, we've got set pacing and interval pacing. Do you want to talk a bit about those two? Yeah. And so this is where we get a little bit more into like some of the, for competitive swimmers and general swimmers, this is important, but we really find with the triathlon community being able to consistently pace so that they are effectively training and bringing that pacing into their races is so vitally important. And so we have set pacing and interval pacing. So the interval pacing, imagine doing like really long swim, maybe a thousand meters in a row. It doesn't have to be that long, but just as an example, and you're just trying to hold the same pacing the whole way. And when you're doing your 1000 or you're doing, you're in open water or you're in, um, like in the pool trying to do your triathlon, it's hard to maybe gauge that okay, you're going hard at the start, your pace might be a little bit quicker, you slow down in the middle, you're building up, and you're really doing a lot of things by feel. So being able to have something to tell you in real time, are you on your pace? Are you under? Are you over? To be able to help you gauge your effort, um, especially through the interval, very challenging where you're doing it for longer, being able to understand like, okay, you really got to be smooth at the start to hold the same time from start to finish. And then taking the same method into a set where rather than doing a straight swim, you might be doing a, a broken set, 10 100s. I, same thing though. Are you starting too hard on the first one? Are you starting just right? Being able to hold each of those 100s consistently so that the way that you're practicing shows up in the way that you race. And how's that displayed inside the, the goggles? Let's say you're choosing set pacing, for example. How's that appear? Yeah, so the way that we have it set up right now is that you'll swim your, your 10 100s, you do the first one, and that first one kind of sets your goal time. And so say you're doing 10 100s, your first one's 130. Okay, we're going to try and hold 130 the rest of the way. And then as you go through, what you're going to see in the goggles is the goal time at the top beside your running time. So you're going to see the, like 130 is there and you see your running time ticking closer and closer up to 130. And then you might find on that second 100, it's like, oh, the 130 went past when I was five meters away from the wall. Okay, I got to speed up a little bit, manage my effort a little bit in order to match the pacing that I started with. And then um, at the same time, well, rather than trying to do like the mental math of, okay, I missed... I went 132.7. I was supposed to be 130. How far was I off? In the goggles, it'll tell you how far you were off your first one. And so you go 132.7. Okay, I'll show you the time. 2.7 seconds off. Try and do this to be able to get mm -hmm. to your next one and just give you those subtle reminders of how to stay on pace as you're going through it. Yeah, that's uh, that's really good. It's uh kind of like what you could do running for for many years when you've got a you know garmin watch on or something like that where you you can just see your, your pace you can see where you're at if you're doing 400s on a track uh that's something that's just been elusive for swimming for such a such a long time so to be able to just know your running time uh is it's so helpful and there's been not that feature exactly but that ability just to kind of see where you're at within an interval that's one of the main things i've really loved about the goggles is just having that immediate um well just that immediate um feedback like after you come off a turn and those sorts of things and um that's that has made my longer sessions just so much more enjoyable and being able to be accurate with my pacing as, as well because otherwise i'm trying to look up at the sick the stop clock which uh, you can sometimes see but um normally my goggles are foggy or I don't see it on the turn. So I just haven't been able to, to do that. So with the form goggles, you know, you can, you can do it. So it's just, it's such a great experience. And that's the feedback I've got from a lot of the athletes that I coach who use the goggles. They're like, wow, this, like, this is a, a lot of fun now that I, I know roughly where, where I'm at. Yeah. It's like, I mean, the goggles already like will tell you your time and be able to um, show you your pace and stuff like that. These um, head coach experiences like interval pacing and set pacing really goes like the next step to enhance what you're doing. So, yep, 
you you're able to get your time before, but now let's put that into the context of, are you being consistent? Are you training in a way that's going to help you towards whatever performance you're preparing for, whether it's a triathlon or 1500 or masters meet, whatever it happens to be. We know that like the more consistent that you're going to be, the better that um, the way that your training is going to show up in the race. And so mm -hmm. the, these uh, interval and set pacing experiences really help enhance what the form goggles are already doing for you and capturing your time and pace. Now, the, the last one is, is time to neutral. So here we're talking about um, the breathing. So the time mm -hmm. to bring it back to head down, basically. Is that, is that right? Can you explain uh, this one a little bit more? Yeah, this one's a little bit more complex, but I think the premise is pretty simple, where we know that we want to have our breath in time with our regular swimming. And like, unlike running or biking, like we have to breathe in the, when we're swimming in the water, but coordinate that with our stroke in a very rhythmic way. And so the way that we measure time to neutral is essentially from when you take your breath, how long does it take you to come back to the neutral? And the common errors that we often see is like, you take your breath quickly and your breath is hanging there. You take your breath, now I'll come back to the water and your, your face is out of the water for a long time. A bigger proportion of your breath is keeping your face out of the water. We want to make sure that to keep your breath in time, in sync with your swimming, that you're just moving your head enough to breathe. But then as soon as you have that breath, you're coming back down. So we want to see that time to neutral time shorten, be a, a lesser uh, proportion of your breathing time to bring your head from your breath back to neutral so that your breath is staying in sync with your swimming. Mm, it, again, a really common one that I see when we look at videos, when we record people, is that they'll turn their head with their shoulder roll initially. So they're turning it at the right time, faces out of the water just as that backhand is exiting, which is good. And then they just keep their arm out of the water. So their head out of the water for too long. So there's, there's that lag, there's a delay for it to come back down. And the downside to that is if your head stays off to the side, but your, your body and you, is rotated back and your arms begun the catch already, then everything's out of sync and you're just not going to get that coordination and, and syncing up of the head coming back and the body going back and you're, you're catching with your arm that's in the water. You can get a lot of power from that if you time it well but you can't if that head's still off to the side. You're going to miss out on a big part of that. And we see that when we've measured the, uh, the, the power during that, that part of the stroke, when we like use the EO Swim Better devices, we can see that you, you do miss out on a lot of power if you don't time that correctly. So it's a, it's a simple one, but it's one that you, you probably wouldn't be aware of. Like I, I, I'm guilty of it. I, on occasions, my head stays out too long. And I've seen that in some, some footage. And it's just something that, I think it happens so quickly that we just don't know that that it's happening. So something like this is going to tell you whether or not it's happening. Yeah, like it's it's such an important thing where, I mean, how many swimmers have we seen where they are either swimming with a snorkel or you ask them to breathe um, like every five strokes or something like that. And their swimming strokes look so nice. And then as soon as they turn their head to breathe, it's like a completely different stroke. But unfortunately, like the cases for swimming is that you're going to be breathing every two or three strokes, like regularly. So that breathing stroke has to be ingrained into the coordination and um, be in sync with your regular swimming stroke. And um, what we often find is like exactly what you said, where it's like, oh, I've, like this is something that's even difficult for me, where I find that's the case for me as well. But especially when you get tired. And you like you want to take that breath in. It's like you want to take that extra bit of time to inhale the air, or you're moving your arms so fast that you have less time to actually take that breath. And being able to keep in sync becomes a lot more of a challenge when you're tired, when you're trying your hardest, when you're swimming fast. And um, so this time to neutral measure helps be able to keep your um, breath in sync with your swimming, even at those higher end efforts, so that you can. Just keep on flowing with your regular stroke. And if I did a video recently on on Lucy Charles Barclay, who won Kona recently, and she's got a very high stroke rate of around 90 strokes per minute or 45 stroke cycles. And it's, it's very quick. And if you have a look at her breathing, she is very quick to turn it, very quick to bring it back. And that's what is really needed, especially as you get into those higher stroke rates uh, but you can see it's she's not hanging hanging around for long with that breath so you have to be able to turn it quickly still get enough air and you can still get enough air even if you are 
moving ahead quite quickly, but it's just something that we've got to got to train. And I know uh, you put a lot of work into these new features with with the form goggles, and there's a lot on the way. I'm guessing you probably can't talk too much about what you've got um, coming, but I know you sort of work. There's other things that are that are in the works. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Uh, about what you're working on? Yeah, sure. Like the stuff that I can kind of mention right now is like we're first of all, this isn't an endpoint for us. This is the starting point for form to be able to coach through the goggles on technique. And so as we go forward, we'll continue to try and develop other metrics that could be helpful for swimming technique. But then also just being able to deliver these ones in a way that is it becomes even more seamless for the, the swimmer. And so right now we have the tools for you to use. Over time, maybe we can integrate those tools in a seamless way so that you can just swim your, your practice regularly. And we'll know, the goggles will know, oh, your peak head roll is uh, going too high. Little reminder to bring it back. Or a drill set's coming up. We know that you need to work on your head pitch the most. Here's a suggestion for a drill to work on it and be able to have that more integrated and seamless in the goggles without having to worry about like, oh, I know I need to work on this. What do I do about it? It just becomes a part of your swimming experience with the goggles on. Mm, yeah, I love it. Well, um, Brian, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast again and, and talking about these new features. Uh, for those that don't have the goggles, you, if you've listened to this podcast at all, you know I'm, I'm a big fan. Form's been a sponsor for probably 18 months, two years now, probably probably longer than that. Um, so I'm really appreciative for, for that. And uh, it, it's because I'm a fan of the goggles and uh, and I know a lot of swimmers who, who use them and uh, they only rave about them too. So uh, thanks again for uh, for joining me and I'm looking forward to seeing what, what comes in the future as well. Um, anything that we haven't covered that you think we should have covered before we wrap up? Oh gosh, like, I mean... Like I said, this is really just a starting point. I think it's really exciting that with the goggles, with the heads up display and the way that we connect it with the app, the potential for us to grow in this area, to be able to coach the swimmer through the goggles is really great. But one thing I wanted to highlight is like a lot of these tools, a lot of people who use form, um, well, you, we have like workouts, we have plan training plans and stuff like that if you're training on your own. But we know that a lot of people will be part of a master's group and they have the goggles. It captures their, um, their data seamlessly, but they might be just doing a free swim to record it. A lot of these things like form score is a very unique um, efficiency measure. And something like that really enhances the workout that you're doing, whether you're being coached on deck or whether you're using some of the form uh, content. And those are the pieces that we want to keep on building so that no matter what the user is doing with the goggles, whether they're doing our content or getting coaching on the side or they're coaching themselves, being able to have more tools to help them become a better swimmer. That's what we're always working on as we go forward. Yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, one of the things that's been great for us is like, we've got our eight week faster freestyle course. We go through different aspects of the technique there. And the workouts from that course, you can just click the link in the in the course. It's going to download it to your goggles and you can follow along with it. So even just features like that for me have been really helpful to work with our athletes uh, on, on these sorts of things. So uh, I, I like how it's all able to tie in, whether you're following the form workouts, whether you're following someone else's workouts. You've got the uh, training peaks integration as well to be able to add them to your form goggles. So lots of cool stuff like that is just making... Uh, it able to tie in no matter what your situation is with coaching. So it's it's been really helpful for for me as a coach too. So yeah, appreciate appreciate that, Brian. Thank you so much. It's been a uh, been great having you back on, and uh, I'm sure this will happen again in the next sort of six to twelve months as we find out what else is coming down the pipeline. For sure. Thanks for having me, and I look forward to chatting again soon.